Hi guys, it's Daniela from California Carnivores. I don't know if you have ever emailed or DM'd us, but if you have, I'm the one who answers all of those, so it's me you're talking to. And because I answer all of those, I kind of see all the trends and questions, and that's usually how we determine what we're gonna do a video about. And I cannot believe I didn't think of this one on my own. So thank you, one of our followers actually suggested this, and it's a brilliant idea, I'm really excited to do it. They suggested that I do a video about all of the different hitchhikers you can get when you order a plant from California Carnivores. So we're gonna talk about that today, and I've got some examples to show you. So I know you may be asking right now, first of all, what are, you, what are you talking about? What is a hitchhiker? What is a volunteer? So that means a plant that got into the pot that we didn't put there on purpose, that we had no intention of actually planting. And that happens because of seed dispersal and spore dispersal within the nursery. So for example, I have, this is a Venus flytrap. All these plants I pulled off of our sales floor. These are plants that are going to ship to customers eventually. So see, this is a Venus flytrap. But look, it's got all of this stuff growing in the pot with it. Those are all volunteers. We did not do that on purpose, but they're wonderful. So there's really three main things you're gonna get. Moss, utricularia, or dross wrap. And they all kind of fall into the same categories. They're all kind of the same things. So the first thing we'll talk about, because this is really common to get, is moss. So you can see just a simple little moss on the top of this pot. These are the spores of the moss. That's how it kind of disperses itself. And it's really lovely. A lot of people actually request mossy pots. We can't really accommodate that. We try, but it just happens when it happens. We don't force it. We try to get them all the moss over, but there's not much we can do. So this is a mossy pot. Don't worry about the moss. It's really not gonna outcompete a large plant, but if you have a really tiny plant, you might wanna keep an eye on it and just kind of pull the moss out around the baby plant just so it doesn't overgrow it. So the next one we're gonna talk about is like the most common, and that is the Drosera. So sundews, right? These are two different kinds of sundews. We've got the most, well, we'll start with this one actually. This is the fork leaf sundew, Drosera trifida. This is a temperate Drosera, so it can be outdoors and it goes dormant in winter. It's really pretty and it shows up in a ton of pots, especially in our Saracenia pots because they're outside with it. Uh, perhaps the most common one that you'll ever find and probably within your own collections as you build them, you'll find are our Drosera capensis, the Cape sundew. So it's this guy right here. You can see how many are in this one pot and they are gorgeous, beautiful, fun things, but they really take over and they can really just get into everything you own because they seed prolifically when they flower, but they're beautiful and they're fun. And that's why I recommend them. If you've never owned a carnivorous plant, get a capensis because they're gorgeous, they're easy, they're vigorous. And I mean, like, honestly, they're so pretty. I have so many fancy carnivorous, carnivorous plants at home and yet I still love my capensis. They just make me happy. They're sparkly and beautiful. And then the very final one we're gonna talk about are my, my personal obsession, utricularia. So those are also commonly called bladder words, which is like a horrible name for something so beautiful, but you might get terrestrial bladder words. I say that because there's three different kinds. There's tropical, terrestrial and epiphytic, and they're all different. But terrestrial bladderworts are spectacular. Look at that, it's like a little fairy garden. So the flowers are two different species that you might get. And they have like little tiny bladder traps in the soil where they catch microscopic prey that you don't even know what's going on in there, but there's, there's a whole world under here you don't know about. So the most common one are these, Visquamata, and they're um, white with purple and pink throats. And then the other one you might get is my favorite, subulata. Pure yellow, like big bird yellow, electric yellow. And they are just so pretty and they just flower like crazy. And they're so perfect. So yeah, you might get a tiny ecosystem in a pot from us. I can't promise that's gonna happen. And no, you cannot request it. It's, we can't really do that for everybody. But look, like a beautiful tiny little ecosystem in a pot. And the two questions I get around the volunteers. Okay, first of all, the care for the volunteers, don't stress about caring for the volunteers. Care for the plant you bought. So in this case, it's a flytrap, give flytrap care. The volunteers have been doing fine in there with the flytrap. They'll do fine how you care for them as long as you do the flytrap justice, right? So don't stress about that. Just care for the plant you bought, not for the volunteers. And then the other question I get a lot is when can I transplant them? So they're not gonna, generally they're not gonna outcompete the main plant, but like you can see, this is kind of crazy, right? So this is a great size to pull these plants out. You can gently pull them out or break up the whole pot. 
make sure you are really gentle because there's a big long root in here and you want that whole root to come out. And you can totally transplant them at this size. Even at this size is a good, good one. Anything lower than like this, probably gonna be hard to transplant. But yeah, that's all I have to say about the exciting world of volunteers. And again, I cannot promise you're gonna get one, but you probably will. So I hope that helped. And then if you have any other suggestions, let me know. I know you guys want me to do a bog garden video. I will probably have to do that one from my house just because of this crazy shelter in place situation. There's a lot of work to be done in the nursery. So anyway, I will work on a bog garden one, but if you have other ones, please tell me. And any other suggestions for videos are super helpful. Put them in the comments. All right, have a good day.